everybody, this is Crystal Seth, and today we are going to be doing something a little bit special because I'm preparing for me and my girlfriend's three-year anniversary, and I kind of wanted it to be a big deal, so I'm going to make her a big gift. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to make her a DIY custom Ghibli Monopoly set. Now, this is something I've never done before, so who knows? It might be trash, but we'll see. So, uh, let's get started. Alright guys, for this DIY, I'm pretty much just going to be using an old Monopoly board and then remaking it. So, um, I'm mainly looking for the board out of this one, but I'm also looking for houses and hotels out of both of them. Look at that organization. You know what, I mean, if your Monopoly boards don't look like this at your house, I don't know you. I mean, look, there's a pizza grease stain on the back here. Survived a few pizza parties, I'm sure. All right, so starting here, we have Arietti's house from The Secret World of Arietti, Totoro's tree from My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's apartment from Kiki's Delivery Service, forgive me on the pronunciation, but Quartier Latin, Quartier Latin, something like that, from Up on Poppy Hill. Then here we have Sasuke's Cliff House from Ponyo, Tasmania's Ross Bakery from Kiki's Delivery Service, Piccolo's Plane Mechanics from Porco Rosso, Aunt Charlotte's Estate from Mary and the Witch's Flower. Now, I know that's not Studio Ghibli. However, a lot of the illustrators and artists from Studio Ghibli went to Studio Ponoc and made this film. So, I allowed it. Tama Hills, or Tama Hills, I'm not sure the pronunciation on that one, from Palm Poco. Then here we have Zaniba's Cottage from Spirited Away. Hotel Adriano from Porco Rosso. Valley of the Wind from Nazuka and Valley of the Wind. Patsu's Mining Town from Castle in the Sky. Iron Town from Princess Mononoke. Marnie's Mansion from when Marnie was there. Cat Kingdom from when the cat returns. Fujimoto's Underwater Harbor from Ponyo. Indoor College from Mary and the Witch's Flower. Lord Cobb's Castle from Tales of Earthsea, Yubaba's Bathhouse from Spirited Away, Howe's Castle from Howe's Moving Castle, and Laputa from Castle in the Sky. And making our way right back around the board, we have the non-property spaces. And for the first non-property space, we have the community chest. And on that one, I decided to put a Laputian necklace, which was from Castle in the Sky, and it's the necklace that Sheeta wears. For income tax, I decided to put Yubaba because I feel that she is probably the greediest character, and I just felt like she is probably perfect for this space. So Yubaba from Spirited Away. For the first transportation space, I decided on Porco Rosso's plane from Porco Rosso. And apart from the community chest for the chance card, I am going to be putting Hal's ring on there. And I have a lot of Hal stuff on this board because that is her favorite movie. And I'm trying to put as much Hal stuff on this as I can. For the in jail space right here, I want to put the Wicked Witch of the Waste from Hal's Moving Castle after she's been drained of her powers. I just feel like that's the perfect, perfect picture to put there. For Electric Company, as well as Waterworks down there, I want to put two shops. And for the first shop, I decided it would be Sophie's Hat Shop. For the second transportation space, I have picked the Cat Bus from My Neighbor Totoro. For free parking, I decided that it should be Calcifer from How's Moving Castle. For the third railroad, I have decided that it will be Nausicaa's Glider from Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. For waterworks, I have decided to make it Shiro Nishi's Antique Shop from Whisper of the Heart. For the go to jail, slot i kind of debated on this one and then i finally decided on lady eboshi from princess mononoke and i just feel like she is the most 
hardcore character in all of the movies, and she would be the perfect policewoman. For the last transportation space, I decided that it should be the spirit train from Spirited Away, because what better than an actual train to go on a train spot? And last, I have Luxury Tax, and on this space, I decided that it would be the Cloak Vendor from Tales of Earthsea. Alright, so starting with the box. Um, so basically, in case I hadn't said already, uh, this Monopoly set plus the box is being reused. So I'm basically just taking old one and putting stuff on it and making it completely different. So starting with the box, I went to the dollar store eyelash. I got two cans of outdoor yellow spray and um, spray paint and then I covered it like 40 bajillion times until you could not see the actual box anymore. That was a trip. So um, yeah. Now, after I was done with that, I took a pencil and sketched out um, Totoro's face and then I um, added, you know, Monopoly Man, you know, uh, little doodads like the hat, the mustache, the, um, the bow tie, and I made, you know, a cross between the two. But um, something didn't make sense to me. I thought the Monopoly man had a monocle, and I'm not even kidding. I did not look up the Mandela effect. I just thought he always had a monocle. Like, And then he didn't, so I was like, um, what's up with that? So I probably should have just given him a monocle, you know, just to spite, but... It's fine. I think it looks pretty good, so. Moving on. So as far as recycled things from the old board goes, I got the money holder and I just reused it. So what I did is I just took a um, cloth and then took some alcohol and um, some Q-tips, cleaned out all the little crevices. This was a really old board. It was from 98. Um, so, but I mean, this is still in really good shape. No dents, no scratches. I mean, it looks really good, so I'm just gonna reuse it, so. <laughs> All right, on to the money. So, um, one thing that I've noticed about a lot of uh, themed Monopoly boards, you know, that aren't normal, um, they do not do the traditional money. Instead of dollars, I was trying to think of something that would be kind of cool that I could use that's Ghibli themed and I decided on the soot sprites from Spirited Away and I thought that would be super fun, super different, and it would just look really cool. So, so here's the uh, $1 and then I got um, seven. So I got seven different colors of paper and um, that's what made up all of the bills in the game. Like the 500 is the orange paper, the 100 is the yellowish orange paper. Now we have a full deck of money. Now, how did I make the image to go on the paper? I just went into Photoshop. I thought it turned out pretty good. And then after I got it printed out on paper, I took a little like exacto slidey blade thing. I don't even know what that thing's called. Now moving on to the um, property cards. So what I did is first I took two pieces um, of cardstock or several and took two pieces, glued them together with, with some Mod Podge and um, some regular Elmer's glue I'm pretty sure or something like that. Then I printed it off so that they're super durable, super thick. I mean, these are gonna last, I mean, unless you spell something on them, <laughs> please no. Um, but yeah, other than that, here's all of them. And I did the same exact thing like I did with the money. I took it through an exacto thingajigger. Okay, so moving on, and now we will be looking at the the chance and community chest cards, which I instead turned into uh, 
Hal's ring and Sheeta's necklace. Um, so here's like what the front of Hal's ring looks like. I think, yeah, that's right side up. <laughs> and here is the top of Sheeta's necklace. Now I did something a little different for these. Um, what I did was I took a piece of folder. So like I bought some folders that had this tan look on the inside and then I glued cardstock to the other side so that I could get the white on this. The reason I wanted the tan is because it matches the board, which you'll see. But the reason that I put white on this side is so that the necklace and the um, ring would show up better on the, on the top of the card. And I just kind of ghibli Ghibli-ified the, um, the cards. After I glued them and did all that, then I sent them through the exacto uh, slicey dicey thing. And then you come out with cards like this. Cards like this. <laughs> Okay, so for this part, I am gonna be talking about the game pieces. This didn't really turn out how I wanted it to, so I have some modeling clay at my house and I am not a sculptor, so uh, it did not turn out how I wanted it to. So basically what happened was I was, you know, sculpting out all these little intricate pieces and then I was gonna, you know, bake them off, paint them, and then I had some like protectant, like shellac, shellacking spray. I was gonna like seal it and then everything was gonna be hunky-dory and I was gonna have super cool, unique game pieces. But instead I came up with this because um, that failed. <laughs> instead what I have is I took the modeling clay, made little tiny discs and then made like a little slit down the middle. And I don't know if you can see that or not. There's like a little slit. And I took those um, leftover folder pieces from the Hal and Sheeta cards and I did the same thing, glued some paper to the front of the um, folder piece. Then I printed out these little pictures on it, like this one's this little dude from My Neighbor Totoro, the boat that is on Ponyo, Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service, like this one's Mononoke, Arietti's hair clip, and the dog from Howl's Moving Castle. So I have a yellow one, pink one, orange one, blue one, red one, green one. So that adds up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, six pieces. Usually a Monopoly board has eight pieces, but I went with six just because it takes forever to make these. So after I printed them off, cut out the little circles, I would um, glue them into the painted bottom and then I shellac them and then put some other protectant stuff on it. So these should not go anywhere. If I'm not mistaken, I even glued them with six, E6000. And when you glue stuff with E6000, they're not going anywhere. That's that for game pieces. All right, so on the topic of reusing game pieces from an old game, I'm actually using two things from two separate Monopoly boards. So one is the hotels from one board and then I'm using the houses from another board. And I have some like different colored ones. I have like a yellow one here, a red one, there's some blue ones in here and then some, I think a few green ones. And I got those from a Monopoly Junior board and then Something that I thought was really interesting was that I actually did not have enough of the little houses from the um, from the big Monopoly board. So instead, I had a Monopoly build it. I can't even remember what kind of Monopoly board it was, but what you do is you stack the houses like this. And I thought that would be super cool and super different. So like, here's one house and then you would put another one on top of it. And they kind of reminded me of those like Japanese houses or those Japanese buildings that had like the swooping roofs on them anyway. I just thought that'd be super cool. And the spaces on the board are a little bit small anyway. So I just thought that would be kind of a fresh, a little fresh thing to do, so. All right, so on to the big part. We are gonna be looking at the board. So as you can see, <laughs> 
there's some sandwich bags here, don't judge me. So, um, that's basically just to protect the inside and the board because, oh my gosh, people, this was the hardest part. And I mean, I know that's like kind of obvious, but like the board was so freaking hard to do. This is the bottom of the board. Why did I choose this color? I don't know. I just needed something to cover up the, the stank. Like it had like stuff all over it. There were spots, it was gross. So let's open it up. I promise it's okay. This board, oh my gosh, has caused me so many problems. Y'all don't even know. Oh, it still looks good. It's been in the box for a few months. I'm glad that nothing crazy has happened. So if I can lift it without, you know, destroying it. Uh, here is the board. Anyway, so uh, here's the board. I'm super happy with it. So. It didn't turn out entirely like I wanted it to, but it all worked out in the end. It's fine, I'm happy. So, to make this board, basically my plan was I was going to make this all in Photoshop and then I was gonna print it and everything was gonna be hunky-dory and then I was gonna spray it with some protectant and it's all gonna be fine, right? No. So basically what happened was um, some crap happened right here I sprayed it, it looked fantastic. I was so happy with it. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm just gonna fold it up on itself while it's still wet. So then I left it to dry and then when I lifted it off, it ripped up some of the paint. Now I don't know if you can see, but there are some places on this board where I have had to um, fix it and try to match with acrylic paint and then spray over that to protect it. I've done that for so many spaces and it's so annoying. Uh, obviously the place in the middle, there was so much stuff right here that was happening and I had to just cover it up. Basically just printed this out and covered it up. It was a mess. But nonetheless, it turned out, I'm happy to see that it um, opened up fine. We're good to go and I think it's gonna be a success. I'm super excited to play it and I'm so excited for her to see it and um, yeah, just wish me luck, and we are gonna be playing this for a while. <laughs>